Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Gulfstream Park. I'm uh, Ron Nicoletti, along with Katie Stazak, and uh, we have a good main track, a good surf course before we get started. Hi, Katie. How are you today? Hi, Ron. I'm doing well. How about you? Good. I'm doing great. You know, the beautiful day. We got sunny skies to start the day. We got that good main track, good surf course, but we got big news. In our 11 race card today, in the race six, we have a one. Hundred thousand dollar guarantee in the jackpot today, starting in race number six. So they've been close to hitting this and hitting this over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, um, if you've been following the Rainbow Six the past couple of weeks, we had a fifty thousand dollar guaranteed jackpot, doubling that today, and people have been hitting it, like you said. So you could uh, be walking home with pretty big payroll. Yeah, you got to get your handicap and the hats on and start working on that. And you know, we had a fantastic weekend here last weekend and last Saturday we had five stakes races. And uh, you know, Katie and I decided, to, well, actually, Katie did. She said, let's pick the two races we like the best of those five stakes races. So uh, my choice was the Bob Humphrey Turf Sprint, the a filly against the boys in there, and that was Madame Geary, and she really ran a good race. We're gonna go back and take a look at that race. And she was just powering through. This is the first time she was wearing blinkers. And we spoke to the uh, trainer, uh, Cam Gambolani, said she wasn't really paying attention. Boy, the blinkers seemed to work today. She just drew off and was very impressive. And uh, you see her up there. She was uh, two to one, and that was a pretty square price. But she did have to beat the boys. She did. That was a very impressive performance. A lot of people beforehand weren't really giving her a chance. But uh, she definitely proved all of them wrong. Yeah, and, and you know, I watched a couple of her races before, you know, throughout the country, and she was against grade one competition. It looked like she was always having trouble coming out of the gate and, you know, looking around. So I figured maybe with the blinkers on, she would run well in there. But I know you had a favorite race that day. I did, and I'm going to stick with the uh, Philly and Mare angle. My favorite race from last week was the cash run run by, uh, won by Little Alexis. Uh, let's take a look at that race from last week. Little Alexis, I watching this race, I was so excited seeing her come home. This was her just her second start, first time in a stakes, and first time out in five months. She debuted very impressively, beating a filly, uh, my Miss Sophia. But to come back and beat these fillies after such a layoff, beautiful ride from Edgar Prado. He saved rail along the inside, angled her out, split rivals. I loved that win, and I'm very excited about what she's going to do going forward. Trainer Carla Vacareza said to me, it's just a matter of time before this filly is a graded stakes winner. Not, not if, but when. Yeah, you always uh, don't know how they're going to handle that big jump up in competition. Plus, as you mentioned, the extended layoff. So to come back and win, uh, she can only move forward off that performance. So uh, that is the two of the five fantastic stakes we had last weekend that we wanted to look at. But we got two stakes today. We'll get to those in a while. But we're going to start with our first race this afternoon. And this is a turf course. As we mentioned, the turf course is good. One mile and one sixteenth. These are maiden claim as fillies and mares. Three-year-olds and up scratch to 10, 11, and number 12. I went with the number nine, Senorita Sangre. And I see that you're in the thick and sink. I, I really like Senorita Sangria, and who doesn't love a Sangria on a nice <laughs> sunny day in the summer? Um, this filly's coming off a pair of in the money finishes at this mile and a 16th distance, and I was really, really impressed by our last race. She rallied from more than 15 lengths off the pace that day, circled the field four wide, and only lost by a length and a quarter. Um, filly named Bachata Dancer got the jump on her that day. I think if she wasn't so far back, that outcome would have been different. So I think she just had too much ground to make up, and if she lays a little bit closer today, I see her being the best filly in the race. Yeah. I'm sorry, Katie. We're looking at all the uh, publications around the country today. A lot of people have the horse that we have in second on top of the ticket, and that is the seven. Kimberly is you. He's hoping to make amends. She closed to finish fourth behind Senorita Sangria last time out. She was sent off as the favorite that race. And, and these horses are pretty easy. Probably would want to go with an exact the box. But I certainly give the, uh, the heads up to number nine, Senorita Sangria. I'm in complete agreement. And I, I closed it. I actually, my ten horse, so it was my third pick, scratched out. I added the five, Blonde Diva in the second, uh, first race. Excuse I me. also had the 10, and I scratched into the 8 MZ Dancer. Oh. So it looks like we uh, uh, agree on a lot early on here today. Okay. Our second race, we're going to the main track. As we mentioned, we're starting the day with a good main track. Had some rain here uh, last night, but it is a beautiful day. As I mentioned, blue skies. And uh, if you, anything at Gulfstream only takes a race or two before the race. Uh, track gets upgraded too fast, and it's our firm because sun is pretty strong here at uh, Florida in summer. 
some news I'm giving out about the sun being strong in Florida. Let's get to the second race. One mile starter optional claimer, three and up. Claiming price, if you want to run for it, is $10,000. Scratch the two, roll up to five. Feels like flying. The jockey on the three is Abdil Hyen, and the jockey on the seven is John Delgado. I went with the eight, double judge, and double judge certainly knows how to win, but number three, who you picked, Whiskey Tap, no slouch in the wind department. Absolutely. I really like Whiskey Tap, seeing him run over the past few months here. I, I, he's become a little bit of a favorite of mine. It's hard to believe that this horse is doing some of his best running at eight years old. His total earnings so far this year, and we're about halfway through the year, already is more than any other year total earnings for this horse. Uh, he didn't win all at two, in 2013. He's already has four wins this year. He hasn't been worse than second in his last six starts and has won three of his last four. Two for three at Gulfstream. His last start was a win at this distance. All the numbers just pointed to him for me. Yeah, let's mention that number eight double judge. He's a winning machine, too. He stretches out to my post at his fourth consecutive victory when defeating $8,000 condition claimers going to six and a half furlongs on the call to main track. So it looks like the logical two horses there. And we both used the four red hills in it. You can't go wrong with Jose Garofalo and jockey Edgar Zayas. Completely agree. This horse is uh, coming off a second place finish on June 29th. He was beaten less than two lengths after setting the pace that day. And he got the best of Whiskey Tap. He beat him by a neck three starts back. So he's done well. Well, we're going to go back to the turf for the third race. One mile and one sixteenth. Maiden claim is Phillies and Mares three and up. Claiming level thirty thousand down to twenty thousand dollars. One scratch in the race number nine, Adar. And I went with the three secret fi fascination. Hey, have you been copying my selection? What's going on here? You're copying me. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like Secret Fascination, too. This three-year-old filly has been contested maiden, maiden special weights in her last four starts, now dropping down to maiden claimers. Um, so I think with that return to this level of competition today, it's the lowest tag that she's ever run for. That's going to be a difference maker. Well, we di differ in our exactor and trifecta picks. So there you go. I went with the four, Charanga in second. Another one, I, I like the three, get, uh, Secret Fascination, getting some class relief after facing maiden special weight competition before the layoff. Uh, trainer Joe Catanese has Jesus Rio atop his daughter of two-step salsa. So we got salsa, we got sangria, we got some party going on here, don't we? Well, we just need some chips. There you go. We'll find one of those later on. Anybody else you like in this race? I like to have and to hold. This is a three-year-old filly bred by Ken and Sarah Ramsey, so that certainly says a lot. She's making just her third career start. She tried grass for the first time last time out. She made a mild rally, didn't have the greatest finish, but I'm going to give her another chance today. Well, this fourth race this afternoon is a six furlong sprint on the main track. It's maiden three-year-olds and up. We have one scratch of the three easement. We have a jockey change on the number eight. Jesus Rios uh, will ride the number eight, and then there's been some scuttle about, about a horse that's running in this race from the Marty Walton Bard, and that's the number five, Astraides, I think it's pronounced. We looked it up, and Astraides? Atreides. Atreides. I'm so. really excited about this colt. He was supposed to run a couple weeks ago, and Marty Wolfson's been waiting for the right, to find the right spot for this horse. So he's going to start today. And uh, this is a half-brother to Dreaming of Julia. I remember being here watching Dream, um, Dreaming of Julia in the Gulfstream Park Oaks. She won by 21 and three-quarter lengths. It was one of the most breathtaking performances I had ever seen. And uh, I think if he runs anything close to that but from his sister, he'll be just fine today. Yeah, I know that he was supposed to run, I believe it was last week or uh, maybe a week and a half ago, and uh, everybody was talking about him. So finally gets the run today. Of course, I put in the second spot was the two. Put some back. This one's going to turn back to the three quarters of a mile today after finishing second. It was a seven furlong race over at Calder, but it was a key race that uh, produced a pair of next out winners. So I just think this horse, uh, keeping some good company coming out of a key race, can be somewhere on the ticket. And I both see we both have the number one back to Seattle from the Bill White barn on our ticket. Yeah, and Bill White is winning at a 22% clip with Maidens making their second start, which is what back to Seattle is doing today. Uh, she was fourth on a very sloppy track at Calder um, in his debut. He was three wide that day. I could see him making a jump forward today as well. Nice little breeze here today. We've got our papers blowing away. It's pretty nice. Feels good up here. Our fifth race. Let's go back to the turf. One mile and one sixteen. Claim is three and up. Non-winners of three races in life. Twelve thousand five hundred dollars is the claiming tag, and we have a scratch of number eleven full ride. I went with the two. Willie Pay. Let me look. Oh, Katie went with the two too. We're just on the same page yeah. today. Um, 
Willie Pay uh, is a lot like Whiskey Tap. He's a very, very consistent horse, as consistent as they come. He's been in the money in nine of his last 12 starts. The only time I've ever seen him run a bad race was when he kind of took a step up and tried the $25,000 level. He excels at this $12,500 level. He's always right there. And really, he shouldn't be eligible for this race. He, he won several starts back but was disqualified, and that would have been his third win. So um, he's making his first start for trainer Audrey Mora and gets Michael Ritvo in the irons today. So um, I, think, I think he's going to get that win. You know, the number eight solicitation, a really interesting horse, in that, that this one goes back to the turf now after rallying four wide. He defeated $12,500, two lifetime claimers. That was the first start under the care of trainer Peter Walder. So I'm saying, well, this horse is going to go back to the turf today. Peter Walder, as you know, does an excellent job. But if you look at this horse's record on the turf, 24 previous races with no wins, five seconds and four thirds. So I'm thinking maybe I can get a little price and uh, maybe Peter Walder could bump him up to uh, stop that also ran status and get him into the winner's circle. He's certainly been doing very well as of late, Peter Walder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and anybody else on the ticket? I know we both like the nine and their Pio's Passion. Yeah, I like the, uh, Pio's Passion. This three year old gelding is he's coming off an unplaced effort in a race that came off the grass, but prior to that, he won a $20,000 claimer and he was second at the $32,000 thousand dollar level. So this is a bit of a drop for him. He's done his best running on dirt, but I think the drop in class is just going to give him an edge. Well, let's go back uh, to the uh, six race. We're uh, going on the main track, four and a half furlongs. These are maiden Philly two-year-olds, and we got some great two-year-old fillies and colts running at Gulfstream Park. This summer, we'll have the Stallion Series in just a little while, so it's going to be, I think it starts August 9th, so uh, uh, all these great fillies and colts running up, uh, trying to win that uh, big prize at the end of the year. So uh, uh, this race scratched the 11, 12, and 13. Got a nice full field. And I went with, wait, did I skip a page? No. No, I didn't. I went with the number six, Slava. Oh, there it is. I was looking at the wrong page. Number six, Slava, turning back to four and a half furlongs, breaking from post 11, stalking the pace, four wide, and finishing third. That was in a five and a half furlong career debut. The trainer, Gennady Dorichenko, been doing great with his two year olds, has Jose Valdivia Jr. at top. This daughter of sharp humor, and I see you went with the three, Frosty Girl. Yeah, I went with Frosty Girl, who's debuting for Jason DaCosta. She's about St. Andin out of a Snow Ridge mare. I really liked her works, eight published works coming into this race. And DaCosta is 44%, winning at a 44% clip with his two year olds. But I also have to mention Gennady Dorachenko, like you said, who is absolutely on fire with his two year olds. According to Equibase, Dorachenko ranks sixth nationally with seven two-year-old wins so far in 2014. Well, how about the number 10 horse in here? And I found this one interesting. It's beautiful Tache. This one is a half-sister to the Florida Derby runner-up, and that is Wildcat Red, debuting for trainer Sandino Hernandez Jr. Nine morning workouts. Now, the morning workouts are nothing to uh, write home about, but a half to Wildcat Red just was interested in this. I think you watch the toad action on this horse, see if it's taking money. Certainly has the, uh, the pro project line to uh, run very well at, at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, we'll see if uh, how well those genes translate today. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to the seventh race of the afternoon. Six furlong sprint. This claim is three and up. Nom winners of three in life. Six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Scratch the two exuberant song. Also note the jockey on the three is Jose Lopez, and on the number five it's Sandre. Ridley. And uh, how did you see our seventh race of the afternoon? Looks like we're swapped uh, with our exactas there. I went with Philanthropo. This four year old gelding's on a two race winning streak, one here, and uh, he won one over at Calder. That was at the $12,500 and $10,000 level. So a tiny drop in class here. He's been in the money in every start since dropping from maiden special weights and a $25,000 claimer. He's the most inexperienced horse in this field, lightly raced. Um, just six starts to his credit, but I think he's just starting to get it as a racehorse. Yeah, he's undefeated since he came back from, from the layoff. The number seven con trip will tussle with three lifetime competition after drawing away to defeat next out winners. Listen to this. Now, the next out winner, one of them was Celtic Stride, came back to win its next race by five lengths. 
Then he also in that race was Be a Wildcat, who won his next start by 10 lengths. So this horse beat two horses that came back and won their next races by a kind 15 lengths and uh, worked a three furlong bullet in preparation for this assignment. So the old key race angle, you know, we always find, I love those things. So that's why I put the seven contract on there. But got the four on Philanthropo for all the reasons you mentioned and went with the 10 Springfield Alley in third. Who do you have in third? I put in Ray's back. Uh, he won at the $12,500 level, two starts back. But he was third last time out after dropping to this level. So that was a little concerning. He's never won at this distance, but I thought he was the most consistent of, of the other horses in this race. You know, we're talking about two-year-olds, and that's what we have to do at Gulfstream Park this summer because it's the most exciting part of the day, I think, when you watch these youngsters run. And I like when they run on the turf early in their career, and that's what we have in the eighth race. We have a five-furlong turf sprint for Maiden Philly two-year-olds. We have a uh, scratch of the 9, 12, 13, and 14. We want you to note that the number 11 will get in and run, and the jockey on the number 6 is Jesus Rios. And I scratched into two uh, like a queen because I had... Knox County Zip on top of my ticket. Was that the same with you? Absolutely. That was the same with me. I scratched into What's Up Kiddo, who's making her first start on the grass for trainer Herman Walensky, who is 33% with horses trying turf for the first time. Uh, she was fourth on her debut be behind two horses, Artistic Touch and Raya Binka, who are both running in the Cassidy Stakes later today. And she gets blinkers on today, so I think that could help her a lot. Well, I went with the number two, Like a Queen, making a grass debut at the rallying to finish an approved second. It was a recent a maiden special weight race. That was at five furlongs on the dirt. The trainer is Antonio Sano, Edgar Zayas atop uh, this daughter of Corinthians. So uh, uh, I love these type of races. And we both had the number seven, Fearless Princess. It didn't run badly in her five furlong debut on the turf. That was a career debut. Right. And she's the only filly in this field with previous turf experience. She's by Leroy de Senimo, who we all know absolutely excelled on the grass. We have two stakes races today, and our first one comes in the ninth race. It's the Bird on the Wire, $75,000. But we want to go back and show you a video from June 14th, uh, and we're going to show you the performance of Kulak in that race. And I know you really like this performance. I did like this performance from Kulak. Obviously, Decabris is the runaway winner in this race. Um, he was a very, very talented colt that we're going to see again today. But if you watch, he drifts out there around the turn, and Kulak has to take back a bit. When when you, you get these young horses and they're running and then all of a sudden have to stop, it's so hard for them to have, get back into that momentum again. They're still young and learning. So I really think that this horse could, was he going to cast Decapurst? No. Could he have maybe been second? Yes. And I could see him doing well today. With that said, we both have Decapurst on top of our ticket, yes. don't we? And you tell them why first and then I'll tell them why. Well, there's so much to like about this horse. First of all, he's got two starts under his belt and is already a track record holder at four and a half furlongs. That was in his debut, which he won by 15 and a quarter lengths. And then he comes right back and wins an overnight stakes in his second start. Uh, Mr. Dorchenko told me that this is the best horse that he's ever had. And that says a lot. Absolutely, and you mentioned his stats before that he's got seven two-year-old wins already, and uh, two of those are from this horse right here. I love, besides Decabris, I love the four in here on course. Been working unbelievably in preparation for his first start since responding to the addition of Lasix with that five furlong maiden victory. Says Stanley Gold told us this horse had bled before, uh, got the Lasix, won, and now is working up a storm. So I put the number four on course on my ticket. Of course. <laughs> How'd you see it? Um, I also like I'm Venezuela, and I ended up taking the top three from the Kodiak Island because I really liked all of them. And I'm Venezuela and had a pretty impressive debut in his own right, who was an eight and a half length winner. Normally you'd be saying that and you'd be going, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. But then, oh, 15 and a quarter lengths is not that impressive anymore. It still is. So I took the top three from the last race, flipped it up a little bit, and I'm going to say it's going to be the same top three today. I have to mention the number five of your wish, the clip. Wicked Rascal, this is a half-brother to Scandalous Act, and Scandalous Act spoke, uh, won all three divisions of the Florida Stallion Stakes last year across town of Calder. She drew away, uh, she beat a pair of next out winners. That was in a four and a half furlong debut. Trainer Kathleen O'Connell throughout the years in South Florida has been one of the best trainers of two-year-olds, and she's got this uh, one of West Acre Gelding, training really nicely for former so. If it goes by, it's, uh, uh, you know, 
brothers, uh, brothers or sisters' uh, performance last year, you got to have the number five wicked rascal somewhere on your ticket. Yeah, scandalous act swept her, um, her division of the sire stakes which is Sire Stakes now yeah, that it's right. coming to Gulfstream, but it was the, the Stallion Stakes. And uh, that was another reason also why I loved Little Alexis's mm -hmm. win, because she beat Scandalous Act last week. So uh, lots of really impressive runners that we're seeing here this summer. Well, our, our second feature event of the afternoon is the five and a half furlong to Cassidy. This is the two-year-old Phillies, $75,000. Scratch the three, the five, and the, the number 11, Lincoln High. And we want to go back and show you a race from June 7th, and this is about the Curlin's prison, Princess. Yeah, I wish we could actually show you both of Curlin's Princess's first two starts, but we're going to show you her most recent start, and this was her first time with blinkers, which made a huge difference. She was very impressive, a four and a half length winner here, just under a hand right at the top of the stretch, the jockey, she looked under his shoulder, that was that confident. And you know, this filly could be undefeated because in her first start, she was making a nice little run, but she got scared when she saw the crown for the first time and completely ducked in, was still second, but lost her momentum at that point to actually win the race. And I think continued use of the blinkers, I think she's going to do very, very, very well. Well, a horse that I like in here is number seven, Naval Command. This one who showed the ability to come from off the pace in a four and a half furlong debut. Can't end up sitting a really perfect trip in here because these youngsters, a lot of them like to go out and wing ding it on the front end. And Naval Command, you always like a, a two year old that can show that it could be rated off the pace today. Naval Command, and a lot of people were ooing and eyeing after this horse's uh, debut victory from, uh, you know, so I, I just think this horse can run well and might sit the perfect trip in there. Well, trainer Bill Kaplan trains primarily for distance. He says that. He looks for horses. He trains for distance. And for a first-time starter, Philly, winning for him at four and a half furlongs, that says a lot to me. And today she's stretching out to five and a half furlongs, still a very short race. But still, I think distance is only going to help this Philly. Well, we'll see how that works out. Anybody else on your ticket? I also see you have the, uh, oh, I have the number one on my ticket. That's just Coco's Wildcat. You can tell who it's from. This is from the Kathleen O'Connor Ball. She makes, this horse makes its stake debut, uh, drawing off to win its four and, four and a half furlong debut. Comes back with a bullet work, and I'm thinking if you need a horse to be somewhere on your trifecta ticket, that might be the one. And also, what about Standard Deal? This filly followed up a third place finish in her debut with a five and a quarter length win. That was the first time that she had blinkers and her first time Lasix. So that was a really big improvement. She ran those five furlongs faster than Decapris ran the first five furlongs of the Kodiak Island that day. That's a good angle right there. So. You've got the number six on your ticket. I'm going to have to go back and look at that one. We're going to end the day on Saturday, our 11th race, on the main track. One mile claimers, three year olds and up. The claiming price is $6,250. We have a jockey change on number two, make the rider Ramsey Zimmerman. And I went with the number 14 leverage row, but I want to preface it by saying it's awful tough to win from post 14. You went with the number 10 horse in here, and tell us why. I went with Sailing Clear. This five year old. Gelding has been in the money in each of his last five starts. He's very, very consistent at this level. He was second beaten less than two lengths or less in his last two outings, so he's been right there. He's won here, he's won at this distance, and if he wins today, his earnings are going to surpass the $100,000 mark for him. That was what we call a hard knocking campaign. And uh, let's talk about that 14 leverage draw. We'll try and make it through the row for trainer Kirk Zeddy. But as I mentioned, the big obstacle is demanding outside. Post, but uh, trainer Kirk Zeddy, he's got Edgar Zayas, and when they're together, they're pretty unstoppable. So, uh, if they can deal with that outside post, uh, the 14, I also used the number two, which you did, Holy Smoke, and the horse that we mentioned last week, and you told me what it meant, and that was the 12, Fear the Beard. Yes, Fear the Beard. If you are a uh, San Francisco Giants fan, you know what Fear the Beard is. One of the best beards in sports there in that picture. And a pretty, um, yeah, good picture too. Huh? Good picture. Great picture. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap up this action and uh, we'll be back in just a little while. want to remind you, we got a good main track, good turf course, and don't forget, we got the Rainbow Six with $100,000 guaranteed. Starts in race number six going to be a really great betting day. Big fields here at Gulfstream. We have the most entries this weekend than any other thoroughbred track, major thoroughbred racetrack in North America. Yeah, we have uh, 10 races tomorrow with one 
125 horses entered. That's over 12 horses a field. So you know a couple are going to scratch because they're on the also eligible list. But what a great way. And that's uh, the best thing about uh, betting thoroughbreds when you got those big fields. That's it for Ron, Katie. Anything else? Have a great day. Good luck.